Good morning. Welcome to the University of Lincoln. And as you can tell, I'm at home and my clock is now bonging to confirm that we've started exactly on time. I'm Ellie Sample. I'm one of your hosts today. I'm working from home because of lockdown, probably like lots of you are as well. And with me today is Emma. Hi, Emma. Hi, good morning. And I'm also at home this morning, unfortunately, because it's a beautiful morning in Lincoln this morning. It is. It's a stunning morning. And normally we'd be welcoming you onto our wonderful campus today. And this is a really strange time for all of us. And following the Prime Minister's announcement of lockdown, we know that this has become a very difficult and uncertain time for young people who have had this major disruption to their studies um, really since March last year, for, so for the last nine months. Now, lots of you won't be in school and you'll have lots of uncertainty about your exams. So you might not be getting the advice, information and guidance that you would normally get. UCAS has obviously delayed the, pers uh, or delayed the deadline for the submission of your application to higher education. And so we really hope that today's open day, well, what we aim more than hope is that today's open day will give you some real insight into what it's like to be a student here at Lincoln. And also you can ask us any questions that you like. Emma is one of my favorite people in the world and she is also a leading expert on the higher education and she's worked in the higher education advising young people for the last 30 years. So there is very little that you can ask Emma that will throw her. So please, wherever you are in the world, say hello in the chat, uh, either on Facebook or YouTube, say hello, tell us where you are. And if you've got any questions, please do ask them. And Emma, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about what the agenda is for today and what people should expect. Absolutely. So um, as Ellie said, please ask your questions. Tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're tuning in from today. So that even if you just say hi, and where you're from. So we've got a good idea who we're talking to, which is really helpful. And um, so this morning we're gonna, um, we've got an agenda of a mix of academic, alumni, and sort of um, the SU really. So lots of people that are currently here. So um, we're gonna to speak to our Pro Vice Chancellor, who is Craig Marsh and looks after the Lincoln International Business School. Um, so he's a font of all sort of knowledge about actually studying at Lincoln and also particularly if you're a parent watching if there's any top tips that um, Craig may be able to give you as a parent because we understand that you know there are lots of questions. Then we're going to speak to the lovely Mark and Mark is absolutely amazing. Mark um, studied with us here doing audio production and is the most amazing guy um, and he will talk to us about Lincoln as a city and also his experiences of being a student here at, Link at the University of Lincoln and his journey, um, which is always really handy to know because everybody's journey is absolutely different, getting here and whilst you're here. Um, then the sort of factual sort of information. So we're meeting the lovely Philippa. Um, who is our heads up our admissions um, department here at Lincoln. So she can answer any of those specific questions you have about the application process and all of the help and support that we've got lined up all the way up to the 29th of January and beyond. And then we speak to the very experienced Ben Ball um, about our accommodation offer, what our typical offer is in Lincoln, how you go about applying and all of those sort of things. And to top it off, to top the morning off, um, we've also got Abby, who is our activities um, vice president from the SU. So she's going to go through some of the activities that we have done prior to this year and hopefully can bring back next year, uh, fingers crossed. But also, even in these very difficult times, all of the amazing activities that the SU put on so that students have a real mix of experiences whilst they're here. That's brilliant, Emma. That's yeah. brilliant. What I'm going to say, which is probably exactly what you're going to say, because so many times we are synchronous nowadays, is a massive hello to all the people who have said hi to us. So hi, Molly in Bedfordshire. Hi, John in Lincoln. Uh, lovely to, to have a local boy on. Hi, Stefan. Uh, you're also from Lincoln and you're hoping to study biomedical science. So you'll be able to watch some of those 
talks from our sciences college later on. Millie from Northamptonshire, thank you for joining us. Lucia, um, it's 11 p.m. in New Zealand. Good night, good evening, and thank you for joining us. Emily from Peterborough. Becky, uh, Becky, my, I just jumped and lost you. Becky, hello, Faith, hello oh, from Stoke-on-Trent. And hello, Wessel. Um, from Germany, guten Tag. Uh, Alan, hi from Wakefield. Kangalim, I've said that wrong. Maybe Kim from Rotherham. Oh, you've got an interview with us for medicine. Well done. Well done. We'll look forward to meeting you then. Chintao from India. And hello from all of our, our schools are following us today. So if Emma or I can't answer your questions, someone from the college or from the academic school that you've got your interest in, they'll be able to answer your question. Also, hi, Nico from Bulgaria. And you're studying here in Lincolnshire in Boston. Uh, hello, India. Namaste. Very nice to meet you. Hi, Abby. Hi, Keith in Newark. Hi. Hi, Jalilia from Sheffield, and if I've pronounced anyone's name wrong, I'm really sorry. And hi, Alex from Leicester. And again, please do paste your questions. And if you're wondering who this handsome young man is behind me, this is my dog Benson, uh, also known as Prince Benson, hence the outfit. And it's a good reminder that we are a university that's a leading university for animal behavior. And so if you have any interest in animals like myself, then Lincoln is a fantastic university to come from. Uh, there's a time not so long ago when Emma and I spent a lot of time working with our researchers teaching a tortoise called Charles Darwin how to cut a ribbon made of rocket for the official opening of our new science building. Uh, that was unexpected, really, Emma, wasn't it? But that, that really happened. And it represents some of the investment that the University of Lincoln has made in its campus over the last 10 years, 300 million pounds, which we've invested. And we have a really fantastic campus, don't we, Emma? We certainly do. It's absolutely beautiful. And it is such a shame that, we aren't, that we're not able to show you today. Um, we've agonised over how we could show you the campus today and with it being such a frosty sunny day in Lincoln it would have been beautiful to show um, but we hope in this sort of next two hours we can um, show you how um, close Lincoln is and hopefully by chatting to some of the people today they can give you that impression. What we have already set up though on our website is pre-registration so as soon as it is safe for for groups of people to come onto campus, then we will be taking you around the campus. So please go on to the University of Lincoln website, lincoln.ac.uk, um, which hopefully you're, you're on anyway, and find that and book yourself a, a session to come and visit around the campus because we are we really love showing you the campus and um, it's the best way to actually understand how close we are to the city, how unique we are, and how some of our amazing facilities as well. And why we're the UK's leading modern university. But don't despair. Today we have the next best thing. We've created a tour which we're going to take you on very shortly. So don't leave us because we're doing the tour at 10.20. But so that's something very exciting to look forward to. And later on, we're doing a tour of the campus with our student union vice president. But first, we always have a special guest whenever we do one of these wonderful open days. We've had Carol Ann Duffy, the previous poet laureate. We've had Chris Packham. And today we've got natural born talent here at Lincoln, a gentleman who's worked globally for 30 years. He is a world expert in higher education, in leadership, in coaching and management. He's worked in the military. He's worked as a consultant. And we are so lucky to have him here with us today. He is the Pro Vice Chancellor, so very important in academic terms, very clever. Me and Emma have to be on best behaviour. Um, and no further ado, I must introduce uh, Craig Marsh, our, our Pro Vice Chancellor for Business here at the Good University. Morning, Emma. Morning, Ellie. It's all downhill from there after that introduction, surely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fabulous to see you, Craig. How are you and where are you I'm today? Really yeah, I mean, my, uh, I'm very lucky, actually, for uh, for those of us working at home. I, I, I have my, my own office, which uh, only the dog can disturb me in here, which is quite possibly likely to happen at some point. 
We are a bit dog friendly, really, at Lincoln, aren't we? I, I don't know whether it's because we're so strong in animal behavior, uh, but we're also incredibly strong in business. And our Lincoln International Business School is, I believe, probably the best in the world. So, Craig, can you tell us what makes our business school so amazing? Well, I, I, it's um, I, I would I would ever always hesitate to claim it's the best in the world, but but we were certainly as a as it was one of the youngest business schools and one of the youngest universities. I think we're getting some claims of that now um, from that group of, of, of universities. Well, it's um, it, it, it's I would I would actually prefer to tell it through the through the eyes of my students because they always give us the best stories uh, of why uh, we give them such a good experience and such a good education. And uh, actually, in a, in a few minutes, I'll be hosting a round table and a discussion with uh, with three of my top students uh, and the heads of departments and uh, and actually one of the students Rebecca today I, I'm always reminded of a, of a of a story and I, I'll never forget it I was in uh, in India in Mumbai uh, taking a group of students and a group of business people uh, on a on a week's placement to Mumbai and uh, one of the hard jobs that I have is to accompany them occasionally and uh, we were we were having dinner and there was uh, somebody came to the table to serenade us and it was a it was a song from Bollywood and and Rebecca, who's from from Middlesbrough, she she started she started to sing along to this song. So I said to Rebecca, "Okay, come on, t t tell me how you know this tune." Then, and she said she learned it from a group of Afghan students uh, when she was on secondment in China. And for me, I think it kind of characterises the fact that we have every right to call ourselves an international business school, and the kind of experience that Rebecca has, and she'll be on in a few minutes talking to uh, to our prospective students. Um, for me, really epitomizes the kind of approach we take at the at the business school, uh, which is to uh, to to encourage our students to become global citizens first and foremost. And that has a number of things. It's about what they know, uh, of course. You know, we're at the academic rigor of our programs, um, but it's also about what they do. Um, and there's a lot of what we do is to uh, inculcate into red thread throughout our programs uh, a, a business experience, a cultural experience for them, uh, such that they can operate uh, in the 21st century. Uh, in anywhere in the world uh, as a manager in any organization. Uh, but then most, most importantly as well, um, who they are. Uh, th so it's the B part. And, and it's a, it's, this is about how they think. It's about their, their ethical approach to business. Um, it's about their really developing their really strong social responsibility. Um, and we have a very strong thread through all of our programs, uh, which is um, driven by our subscription to the principles of responsible management education, which is the United Nations initiative. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the, the sustainable development goals form the basis of, of pretty much everything we teach at the business school. So I think those are some of the things that, that we do um, at the school. Um, but of course, it's always better to hear from our students directly. And all I do really is relate their stories of the experience they have uh, in the education that they get from us. Ellie? I think that's, I, it, it sounds so exciting. I don't know about you, Emma. It makes me just want to join up and, and do, a, do a degree. My, my next question was going to be, but I think you sort of opened it, but answered it, but you might want to say a bit more about how you prepare students for the future and perhaps in the context that, that the current environment is so different and so unexpected. And how, how do you prepare people to work globally in the business of the future? Given the impact of COVID and all those it's, things, I mean, it's a great point, and uh, and and you, we, we, our heart goes out, doesn't it, to our students who've, who've who've coped so well over the last few months with circumstances that none of us could have predicted, and certainly they didn't expect when they started with us at university. Of course, at the business school, a lot of what we do can be put straight online, and of course, uh, as you probably alluded to earlier, Ali, um, I've got. 15 years of experience of, of designing and developing online teaching. So we, we, I think we've done an awful lot to um, not, not completely um, turn our face-to-face -face teaching online. It, it can't completely replicate it, but certainly the, the quality and the standard of our online teaching, um, I think, has been, has been recognised. And, and we, um, uh, so we've done a lot to make sure that the experience continues. But things like subject talks can still, are still done online. So where we would have a guest speaker coming in face-to-face -to, -face to talk to students, something that happens in all of our programmes, uh, those have now been done online. Uh, we've still been running things like the Global Certificate, which allows students to pick up um, and, and show the skills they're having in, in local events, in cultural events, uh, in, the, in the virtual experiences that they're getting by, by working with students from, from our, our um, 60 or so partner universities worldwide. Um, and of course, we can now look forward to uh, next autumn when we think things will start to return uh, roughly to normal. And so some of the things that we do to prepare, whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, 
um, is we um, we put uh, what we call employability, but it's really it's 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 making sure that students are in the best possible place to get a job at the end of their of their degree. Is that we build that into the curriculum. So uh, we now have a. A very popular, actually, the students talk about it all the time, an employability and careers module, uh, where they do a lot of the work that they would be faced with when they join an organization, whether that's an assessment center, whether that's preparing a CV, whether it's getting through an interview. Um, but it's structured by, under, under rigorous ac academic curriculum, where they do an assessment of the job market, for example, and they, they're able to start doing some of their preparation for the job market uh, through that module. Um, through uh, personal one-to-one -one sessions. We have a team of four in the college that is supporting uh, employability and internationality. And, and Judy Turner, my head of employability, will be joining us a bit later on for the, uh, for the, for the round table discussion. So I think it's, it, it's not something that we consider to be an add-on to the central job that we have, which is to, which is to teach rigorous uh, academic degrees. Um, but it really is red-threaded through all of the work that our students do. Um, we are now able now to add for September 2021, um, the Bloomberg Suite, which has just arrived uh, in Lincoln, which is a real-time um, market data analytical tool. Uh, it looks very, very nice. And our students, in particularly in economics and finance, will be able to use the Bloomberg Suite as part of their studies. Um, we, we also have available to us the uh, Lincoln Student Managed Investment Fund, where the students are able to manage real money. Um, so it's not just about giving them skills. It's actually about giving them real hands-on opportunities to, to do business themselves um, before they leave. Um, our professional practice year gives them an opportunity to study abroad for a year. Our um, Libs 100 scheme gives them uh, placements either in the UK or abroad. Now, of course, many of these have been in suspension during the crisis, but, but they, all, they will all kick in again. They're all there. They're all still available. Uh, and we really look forward to being able to deploy these again to the benefit of our students uh, coming September. Yeah. That's brilliant. I'm going to say a quick hello to Alistair Mackay, who is one of our alumnus at the University of Lincoln. So, <laughs> Alistair, hi. Hi, thank you so much. And maybe tell us in the chat what you enjoyed about being a student here at Lincoln. That would be really nice to see. Um, now, you can hear from everything that Craig said why business at Lincoln is so amazing. But Craig, you also take a university wide view because you're a pro vice chancellor at the university. So can you perhaps say a little bit about how employability works across the university and why why the University of the Lincoln of Lincoln is the modern university of the year this year? What what makes it so special? Oh, I think I think there are a number of things that we've we've done to to justify that that particular claim, which of course we're all uh, immensely immensely proud of. Um, I think that it's because I mean I've been talking a little bit about uh, about the business school lately, but you you know that um, that there's, the, there's some of the themes that I've been discussing are really shared uh, right across the university. I mean everything from our our really strong industrial partnerships, the partnerships that we have with Siemens, which uh, of course is uh, predominantly in the School of Science through our engineering apprenticeships, for example. Um, but of course, is is something that uh, many of my own students benefit from. We have, I think, so something like uh, fifteen or twenty of my own students graduate and 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 join Siemens. Uh, that's a very close industrial partnership. Um, but I think that in and of itself is symbolic of the um, the relationship, the strong relationship that we have uh, with our society and our community. So as a university, we have something that we call uh, local to global. So we we really do, um, uh, the vice chancellor has led this, but we, we call ourselves a permeable university, which means that our, our local community, our local society um, really benefit from the, having the university in their midst, um, economic benefits, social benefits. Um, we're very um, uh, we're central to the growth of our of our region, Lincolnshire region, um, but there are areas now that we're developing uh, a global expertise in, which we've developed in our region, um, particularly in the area of agriculture and food, uh, which we're now exporting globally and getting a global reputation for uh, agricultural technology, uh, food and rural and rural health, um, resilience. Um, you mentioned leadership. Now that we've done a lot of work on that in our in our region, which is now starting to get global interest. We're just starting a program in, in, in India, for example, on leadership. So, so I think what students get when they come to Lincoln is that um, intensely homely experience uh, of being part of a beautiful city, of a campus which uh, is right at the heart of it. And it, it, it is almost unique, actually, in, in university campuses in the UK, in having that sort of central kind of enclosed feel, very safe, um, lovely campus, but actually being part of this broader community, this network that extends into our county, but then uh, and then globally in the way that I've been describing. And, and that is that is a pretty special experience for our students, I think, Ellie. 
Fantastic, Craig. So I'm really conscious that you have got to head up your sort of round table um, at 11 o'clock and virtually shift from one room to the next. Um, so just to sort of save your time now, I've got one final question for you. Um, we may have quite a lot of parents watching um, this morning. And so we and I'm a parent, you're a parent. Uh, but what what top tips from your perspective would you give a parent coming to the University of Lincoln? So what, what you know, if you were to give sort of two or three things, what would you sort of say would be something that is unique about Lincoln or that you would reassure parents about? Actually, I think the, the, the one that the first comes to mind, actually, is, is that safe home environment you know we, we, you, you're sending your students I mean I, as you say my daughter is, a, is in a second year and, and, and what you, as a parent what you're thinking about first and foremost is that is your child uh, is leaving you is going away to another place and and I've spoken to parents if I may just in India for example and the, the thing they say now how safe is Lincoln what is it like to be in the city of Lincoln as a student and it is it is a, is a very safe environment you you your 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 children are joining us in a, in a partnership in their education. Uh, we work with them, uh, we don't work against them. Uh, they're coming to a place where they get um, an awful lot of individual support and attention. They are looked after. We do that so well at Lincoln, and that's one of the reasons why we have that reputation. So not only are you getting a great educational experience, you're getting a very safe uh, environment where your, your children, whatever their circumstances, are so well looked after. And we all take huge pride, and in fact, a huge responsibility uh, for that duty of care that's placed on it. So I think that's probably the key message. And, and, and work with us on that, actually. Work with us and, and work with your children to, to give them that kind of experience. I yeah. absolutely agree with that, Craig, to be honest. I really do. Sorry, Ellie, if I think you were going to jump in. and I, But it's because you noticed Nicole's comment. <laughs> Emma, you know me too well. Uh, Emma is one of my favourite people in the world, as I always say. But yes, Nicole, thank you so much. You may have missed the beginning, but this handsome boy behind me is is my puppy Benson, um, Prince Benson. He dressed up as um, gosh, I'm not sure my husband could tell you, but yes, my absolute prince of a dog. And if we're really unlucky, he'll come bounding in because he's also the biggest dog in the world. But I was also going to say thank you to Alistair Mackay, who is completely agreeing with what Craig was saying. He was one of our media production students and alumnus of the university. And thank you so much for those wonderful words. It is an amazing university. Um, I've been here 10 years. It's beautiful. And I think we're going to say a massive thank you to Craig and a goodbye to Craig so he can go and set up, as Emma says. And we're going to attempt to take you on a tour of the city and the university um, from my home in Waddington, also the home of the Red Arrows, which if we're really lucky, they'll fly over in a minute. But thank you, Craig. Thank you for coming. It's been so good to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Ali. Thank you, Emma. And thank you to everybody who's joined us this morning. I look forward to welcoming people next year. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Do we want to just remind everybody just before Mark arrives with us um, that there are three programmes this morning that are starting their sessions at half past 10. So I'm really conscious of time for those. And those three sessions are architecture, history and classical studies. So if you are watching and you're interested in those three, you've got this is your five minute warning really to, to sort of go and listen to those subject areas. All of the subjects are starting at 11 o'clock, so you've still got sort of 35 minutes with myself and Ellie. Um, and I think I noticed um, on the some of the comments earlier, can can you, you know, if there's two things going on, will, will you be able to come back? Absolutely. Everything that we're showing today, you can come back. So you can come and watch um, myself, Ellie, and the application accommodation chats. Um, if you've watched the subject sessions and then coming back. So, so. Can, can I ask you some of the questions actually, Emma? You're right, we've got mm -hmm. some really good questions here. So um, Becky Strange is saying, I've been given a conditional offer. How will she know whether she is required to have an interview or not? Sorry, I missed that one. Sorry, yeah. Becky Strange, oh, she's Becky. saying. Okay, sorry, yeah. Becky. Becky from Bedfordshire, I think. Um, so if you you will have been you will we will 
reinforce this question with Philippa when we speak to her. But if you've got a conditional offer already, then I would assume that that means that you haven't got an interview because you would have notification of an interview before a conditional offer. So, Becky, I would sort of reassure yourself that that means you just need to meet the requirements of that conditional offer. Good luck, Becky. We'll look forward to seeing you. And Liam says, hello, I live in Nottingham, but I want to come to Lincoln Uni. Will it count against me if I choose to live at home? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not, Liam. Um, you know, we, 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 that's what we are. If anything that you listen to, to from Craig and myself and Ellie already is that that that's the beauty. You want you, we have lots of students that commute sort of from the hour sort of radius of Lincoln and if you can do it then it is achievable and if we want students to be happy so whatever route that suits you whether it's sort of living on campus in our amazing halls that Ben will show us later or if it means commuting is is a better option to study for you then yes that's absolutely fine it will not go against you at all. And Hannah, Hannah Bacar, she's saying, I've already applied for child nursing. I'm waiting for a reply. And nursing is so popular this year, isn't it? All of our healthcare professions are so popular, aren't they, Emma? It is. It absolutely is. And as you can imagine, you will get um, notifications. So we're sorry you haven't got that already. Um, but please just bear with us because as you can imagine, um, you know, it's it, it, it's quite a pressured department just at the moment um, and they will get to you um, and there are an, am an amazing amount of applications that we've had through from nursing already but don't panic um, everybody until the 29th of January will have equal share of, of you know you won't be discriminated at all against before that application on the 29th of January. And Kate Grafton, our, our head of nursing, I don't know if she's around today, but she is absolutely amazing. Our students have been on the front line during the, the, the crisis, the COVID crisis. They've been involved supporting the local health care, um, being part of the community and, and doing so much for our local community. And I couldn't be prouder of our, of our nursing students. I, I think they've just been amazing uh, in terms of everything that they've done. And they, they are just absolutely the best, aren't they, Emma? They're a great, oh, great. Oh, they're, they're absolutely amazing. They're, they are absolute credit to us um, at the university. They really are. Um, I've noticed that there's a couple of questions. Sorry, Ellie, I'm just jumping in. Okay. Um, about the foundation science talk, there isn't a, there is a talk, but it isn't live. But what we have also got today is a whole panel of experts across every single area of the university asking your questions on Unibuddy, um, on Slido, and on Unibuddy. So if you scroll down on the on the main page for the VO Lincoln dot. VOD, I'm sure, thank you, Dara. Um, and in, if you scroll down there, then click onto there and ask your questions. So if you've got anything um, science related, there is a whole team of people um, that can answer your questions. So please go and ask them. School of Computing, then we've got Chris on our sort of, he was amazing. Um, and he has volunteered last minute last night to sort of be there on hand to ask any questions so please ask those questions we've had a couple of questions about is, is there a talk for nursing today but before we answer that emma there's quite a few people saying they've applied and haven't heard back from us yet so i am really really sorry if you haven't heard back from us we are incredibly busy we get so many applications at the university of lincoln we're a very popular university so please bear with us and we will come back to you as soon as we can and do ask today um the last question I'll ask you to answer, Emma, and I will ask all the colleges who are watching, please can you go through and answer the questions that Emma and I haven't been able to pick up because there are hundreds of questions today. So please, if you can help us, that would be great. Emma, do you know, is there a talk for medicine today? There isn't, unfortunately, a talk for medicine, but there is a member of the academic staff who is available to answer those online questions. Um, so, yes, we've got support today. There isn't a live talk um, because obviously the the 
application process for medicine, their, their applications were in on the 15th of October. So um, they're not live today, um, but they are they are available for online questions. So any questions you have about medicine, then go on to the chat. Um, and there is an academic member of staff there who is, is there and waiting for your questions. So please ask them. And we'll be really upset if you don't go and ask them a question. So please do go. And I do apologise about my clock. Uh, I have a lot of clocks. I apologise. They bong a lot. Um, it is time to try and do our, our tour, which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to welcome someone else to our, our virtual open day. Uh, this is a really, really special young man who was a student here at the University of Lincoln. And he's called Mark. So I'm going to ask producer Darren to get Mark to join us. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hi, Mark. guys. Good morning. You're right. We're really good. We're really good. How are you and where are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. Um, so like you guys, I'm at home as well, um, but in Lincoln. So loving it here. Um, and as you said, I am a alumni, so I'm an audio production alumni. Um, and I love the uni so much that I've pretty much worked here ever since. So yeah, just excited to be here today. And we're really lucky to have you. And uh, thank you so, so much for joining us. And I think, Emma, you've got a couple of questions for Mark before we embark on yeah. our tour. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have a bit of a sort of um, static tour um, around camp, around Lincoln um, very shortly with you, Mark, and you giving us a very sort of student view of, of the city. But my first question, obviously, is the obvious question, sort of, you know, what did you study at the University of Lincoln and when did you study? Yeah, sure. So, um, as I said, I studied audio production. I started it in 2013 um, and actually I had a slightly different route to your usual route into HE. So I um, went to university when I was around 22. Um, so I had to do an access course, an access to higher education course. So at that point, before I signed up for that course, I had no knowledge of university, even though um, I was slightly older, I was still living at home. My parents weren't really on board with it. So um, obviously learning about um, the university on the open day really helped um, it got them behind me because they knew about student finance like I did at that point um, but I just I just absolutely loved my journey to university and obviously at uni as well um, but yeah I absolutely loved it. It, it for me higher education was something that wasn't really an option for quite a long time um, and I think whether you've gone to university later in life or you've gone through the usual route of your A-levels, BTECs um, you can definitely tell once you're an alumni that um, your life is completely different after university and during university. So, um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I think what you're saying, it's, it's a really transformational journey, really, isn't it? And if anyone yeah. at the moment sort of thinking about submitting their application to UCAS, what would you say to them if they're not sure about whether or not to go to university this year, Mark? Um, well, for me it's quite simple because I you know what have you got to lose um it, it doesn't really cost a lot at all to apply for universities so you know apart from that small fee and and putting your application in you've got nothing to lose if you change your mind even after you've got your offers you know before you enroll onto the course I think you know you can still um you know opt out if you want so if you are thinking about it and you're not sure just go for it because um you know you've got all of these open days these resources to look at and um i just think you'll be pleasantly surprised um if you don't know much about university just how much there is to learn and just how different it is to um you know your your education at college or at school it's just completely different it's it's yours you you own that education they're your projects um it's very independent it's just so different and it for me it was really really interesting i mean i i didn't like school i didn't like college um but university i absolutely loved so you'd go for it interested in mark i guess yeah and definitely yeah 100 percent. i mean i don't do anything audio production related now but it's it's all about the transferable skills for me as well um and as you said it's something that i was interested in so i remember when i went on the ucas website i did the a to z course search um i didn't get very far i saw audio production and i realized that you could do something really fun really creative um and i applied for that um i also applied for media production as well actually and i don't know if you guys know this but i actually started with media production and two weeks later transferred over to audio production um, and I just thought of that when I saw Alistair's comment and Craig was talking about the support and reassuring the parents because um, 
it made me think back to that two week period and you know the academics were so supportive and they were they were behind me 100 percent. and the transition from media production over to audio production was nice and simple i caught up with the lessons that i missed and it was obviously the right choice for me because i went through through with it till the end and really enjoyed it so and that is probably a really good prompt for us to start our tour of lincoln so darren our producer please can you can you start the first slide and the thing that you probably need to know about the University of Lincoln is that we are quite unique. We're a campus university, so everything is contained within our campus. But the campus is in the heart of the most beautiful city that I have ever seen in my life. And um, we're surrounded by nature. So just outside of the Students' Union, there's otters that you'll see in the Brayford Pool. There's geese, there's swans, there's ducks. There's all sorts of wonderful things to see. And what you can, what you're looking at here is the castle, which is Lincoln Castle. It was built in the 11th century by William the Conqueror. So we we have some really amazing heritage here in Lincoln. Uh, we date back to the Iron Age as a city, and then we became a Roman retirement village. And this castle, which, as I say, was built by Rome, uh, by by William the Conqueror, was actually built on an old Roman fort. It's also the site of Lincoln Prison, and it's a it's a really beautiful environment. And the university is literally a 10 to 15 minute walk, depending on how good you are with hills, from, from the castle. And Emma, I'll, I'll... And the hill is the key, Ellie, I think, isn't it? Um, there is a, a, a hill that is called Apple Lane, the steep hill, uh, which pretty much links to the middle earth of Lincoln with the castle here and I think we are going to show a picture of the beautiful cathedral next. Um, now this is Lincoln Cathedral. I'm pretty certain that Ellie will have a whole host of facts about the actual cathedral um, but they sit side by side and, and really sit at the top of this hill of prominence. Um, you know it's something that as a very Lincoln person, and I'm sure, Mark, once you've been a student, once you drive back to Lincoln, you've been away on holiday or you've been away with work and you literally drive back, you know, in the days when you were travelling around schools and coming home up late, tired on a Friday night, seeing that view of the cathedral is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Mark, I'm just going to say that your mic is rustling on your show. <laughs> Sorry. Move it up, when it, rustles, it, it, it sort of, um, it, it does stop anyone hearing what we're saying. And yeah, sorry. There we go. That's all right. That's all right. As, as Emma said, I am going to tell you a little bit about the castle. It dates back to 1072. And for a long, long time, it was the tallest building in the world. It, it eclipsed the pyramids in, at Giza, which had been the tallest building in, in the world until that point. And it was the tallest building in the world right up until 1548. It had a central spire that was built out of wood, which was hit by lightning and which collapsed. And um, it still remained known as the tallest building in the world until the Eiffel Tower was built in 1889. So there's a huge amount of history. As I said, the Magna Carta uh, resides in in the castle. It's one of only four surviving copies of the Magna Carta. And so if you love history, uh, you will you will love the Balegate area of the university of I mean, said the university of the city. And I sort of said the un, of the university because the city of Lincoln is home to only 100,000 people and one in five of them is a student. So we really are a city that exists uh, as, a, as an educational city in the same way as you might find Oxford or Cambridge or Durham. We, we really are a city that is focused around our universities and uh, it's a wonderful place to study. And I think if we go on to our next picture, this will look very familiar to you, Mark. Yeah, it certainly does. So um, obviously that's during graduation. Um, and I think you can see students and well, graduates and families moving over from the uh, cathedral or to the cathedral to the castle. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, I definitely recognise that view. Um, do you want me to talk about my graduation experience? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so 
when you graduate at the University of Lincoln, um, it is so unique, it's so lovely because you basically get to have that experience in the Lincoln Cathedral, um, which is, you know, absolutely amazing. It looks beautiful inside. Yep, there we go. Um, that's what it looks like. It's absolutely spectacular. So I'm not sure whether you can see in that photo very well, but um, there are two separate um, audiences if you like so um once you go and collect your um graduation certificate um you get to walk through all of those you know that crowd of people everyone's cheering you on you're spotting your family there um and you're surrounded by this beautiful view as well um, and it's just it's just really lovely and unique and obviously being a student i did attend some friends graduations as well which were so lovely but it was so different and that's when i realized just how lucky i was to have that experience it was mm -hmm. beautiful Emma, it's your favourite day of the year, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes, I just have goosebumps. Even looking at that picture and seeing all those graduates it just makes me feel so warm. I have goosebumps every time I go in the cathedral and see those students graduate. I'm, I, I'm, I'm very maternal, I think, which I wouldn't really <laughs> say, but it, I just feel so proud of every student that goes through there and, and anybody that is starting their journey now and then they walk across that that stage and are, are sort of presented with their degree because you know three years four years most people do perhaps mark don't they it's a journey and, and it's a it's a journey of ups and downs to get in a degree sometimes isn't it yeah yeah and I think it's interesting because you always think oh you know focus on graduation it's going to be amazing it's going to feel great and then when you finally get there it's just it's out of this world it's it's as you say, it's just an amazing experience. I'm going to say hello to Gurpreet, who's watching us from India. Hello. Thanks for joining us. It's lovely. And uh, we're going to move on and leave the cathedral. And we're going to literally walk out of the cathedral. And we're going to start walking down Steep Hill. And I know it looks like Narnia. And you expect Mr. Tumnus to arrive. But that really is Steep Hill. It's the fourth steepest hill in Britain. It is the most beautiful place i really hope you're getting a sense of how stunning lincoln is it's it's a hidden gem of a city it's it's quite small all of those little shops are are very much bespoke you don't this is away from the high street so you've got lots of little sort of cafes really they're really independent shops aren't they that you know as it's so steep there's always a shop window you can sort of stop and look in um which is always helpful to uh, make that natural little break um but it is it's it's absolutely beautiful it really is steep hill and it just is that sort of link between sort of the modern and the old of, of lincoln isn't it that's a really good way of putting it. And if we turn around and carry on walking down, we come into the high street area where you'll get sort of the normal kind of shops that you would expect in, in any sort of major city centre. But here I have to mention this is Stokes Cafe. And uh, Stokes, I think, was opened originally in 1902. And it remains to this day the best place to get a really amazing cup of coffee in, in Lincoln. And uh, I have Stokes coffee at home. It is so good. And they also do a really good gluten free breakfast if anyone has any dietary requirements. And the University of Lincoln is literally behind this building. If we could look down the, um, I've forgotten what it's called, Emma. Uh, if we just if you just see that little gap between the buildings it's it's um, an area called the glory hole and it takes you down some steps and you literally what well, when i say you hit the water you clearly don't actually hit the water there is a path of it um and that just leads you to the university and it's a side of the witham and brayford pool so it's it just gives you a real, it's it's never the same and we know that, but we're trying to give you a picture as to really how close the city is um, to the to the town, to the town centre. And before we go down there in our tour, we're just going to turn around and we're going to look back up the hill and you can see the stone bow. And uh, this is an amazing building. Henry VIII passed through this when he visited Lincoln. And uh, anyone can go and look around the stone bow. It's open at, at different times and it's it's the home of the mayor in Lincoln. And they've got amazing sort of things to go and look at. I hope you're getting a sense, especially if you're a history student or a classics student, of what an amazing sort of medieval Roman 
uh, city this this is to see. And there's so much history here. And I think we're going to move on now. We're going to travel down past Stokes. And here we are on Brayford Pool. Over to you, Emma. And, and as you can sort of see with that picture of the Odeon, this is sort of where a lot of the, the nightlife um, happens. So along this stretch where all the lights are, there are numerous sort of chains of restaurants. So Wagamama's, Prezzo, um, Ask. Um, who else? What else is there, Mark? Um, did, did you say Nando's? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew there was like a really obvious one. <laughs> these, these Nando's are all there. Now, the, the beauty of this is that photograph is taken from one of the main buildings in the university. This is how close we are. And also, I have to talk about wildlife. You will have already picked up that I'm a, I'm a massive animal lover. And um, in the spring, we watch the cygnets being born and we, we have sort of swan cam. Uh, we, we've been watching the otters. Uh, we've got all sorts of wildlife. Chris Packham visits. He's he's an he's one of our visiting professors. He lectures on a lot of our life sciences programs, and um, he does a biodiversity review when he comes down. And we go down and we look at all of the wildlife that's existing around Brayford Pool. And it's a great place to have a walk and uh, just to get away from things. And you looking here from the campus back up to the university sorry why do i keep calling the cathedral the university the <laughs> thank you emma thank you looking from the university back up to the cathedral you really get a sense of when i said that the campus is in the heart of the city you really are in the heart of the city so when my stepson came to study at the university of lincoln i was delighted because it meant no taxis late at night no buses you don't need you don't need a car you don't even need a bicycle unless you want to go outside of the city and visit some of the amazing parks and, and areas nearby but you can walk anywhere so there's nightclubs there's all sorts of shops and restaurants and things to see and mark what what was your favorite thing about being a student here um, very similar to what you've just said, really. So in my first year, I don't think I went <laughs> further than, say, a mile radius of the campus. Everything was just all in one place. And that was probably one of my favourite things, especially when you're starting out for the first time being ind independent, um, trying to find your feet, obviously, you know, fig figuring out what shops you want to go to, etc. Um, it was so easy to get to anywhere that I needed to be. So I'd say just that it was all compact and all within a, you know, certain area. So. It was great. It is. And just any mums and dads who are visiting, the Prince William pub there is next to the Odeon. And that's one of Emma and my favourite places to nip if we can get away for lunch. And and it's dog friendly. <laughs> just so you know. And Emma, what's your favourite thing to do in and around Lincoln? Do you know what? Around Lincoln, what I sort of love doing is sort of just driving sort of an hour away from Lincoln and going to the coast. So the East Coast, so some of those coastal um, areas is what I sort of love. I mean, I love the city, um, but I have lived here for an awful long time and I do love the city. But I think the beauty is that within no time at all, we can have sort of green space and coastal space. And, and that's that's so lovely. Um, so it, it, it is just a beautiful area. And talking of wildlife and the coast, Donna Nook is an area where we've had around about a thousand seals uh, born. Uh, they, they, the seals come onto land and uh, it's a wonderful place to visit sort of around November and uh, see the seals being born. And uh, I couldn't stop talking in the summer about the fact that I went swimming at the beach at, at uh, Skegness and a seal popped up next to me and uh, scared the bejeez out of me but I was so excited to swim with seals that was amazing so and not something that you generally expect to happen but <laughs> it's time to turn around and look at the campus and uh, Emma I'll let you introduce our amazing library. Yeah, can we just pick up on Becky's um, question? I think, Mark, once we get to, because we have got some actual uh, photos and footage of your time as a student, so maybe you can pick up Becky's questions about how to make new friends when we look at some of your pictures, because having had a sneak preview of those, it shows that you have got several friends or did do while you were at university. So, Becky, yeah. we'll 
that up, I promise. So this is the library. So again, an incredibly beautiful building. Um, at certain points and key points in the cycle, the academic cycle, then this is open 24 seven. Mark, have you got any sort of experience or any stories that you can pull that you had some real time in the library or? Uh, yeah, quite an embarrassing one actually. So in uh, first year, in the first few weeks, because the library is absolutely huge. There's so much in there, which is great. But um, <laughs> I went to the um, reception desk and I just said, um, excuse me, can you tell me where the books are, please? <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't see any on ground floor I didn't know where the stairs was it was just that's just me in a nutshell um but yeah once I found the books <laughs> um it was brilliant um it was it was just really useful to have and I really surprised myself because particularly towards the third year it was probably one of my favorite places which I never thought I'd say about a library um you know my time at, at university they had really interesting features so if you were logged into the wi-fi on, on your laptop or on a computer in the library um you'd get this instant access to loads of um journals that usually you'd only get to see restricted pieces of and little things like that that really helped and it kept me going to the library you've got the quiet floor on and um, the third floor as well which was so useful for say my dissertation and any research um it's just absolutely huge and you've got so much um at your fingertips there it's it you'll definitely go um, to that library if you're going to come and join us at Lincoln, yeah, 100%. Obviously, in audio production, you had access to the Mace Archive as well, which is a separate library of audio production materials, isn't it, Mark, as well? Yeah, yeah. So I had access to that as well, which was really handy. Um, and also I could see um, previous audio production students' uh, dissertations, so good examples of those. So yeah, just everything that I needed um, and I know it's not in the library but as an audio production student I also had access to the media loans as well so um, for free I could loan out pretty much any kind of equipment that I needed which was so handy. And that's the same across all programmes and mm. I am going to refer a question to you from Andrew Roche who says Mark did you find there were older students who you could meet and make friends with? He's 36. Yeah, definitely. So I think there was only around um, 30 on my course. It was quite a small course and there were a couple of um, students older than me as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I mean, I was quite fortunate because I was only 22, so I could just about get away with uh, trying to act like an 18 year old. But yeah, it was it was really diverse. It was loads of um, different you know, ages on campus. It, yeah, you, you're not going to feel out of place. I certainly didn't. So I'm sure you wouldn't either. And there is a mature student society and we can maybe talk to the students union about that later and, and uh, find out a bit more. But yes, Andrew, there's a real mixture of people from all around the world, uh, all different ages. Diversity is the essence of higher education here at Lincoln. And you can expect to meet and make friends with a massive range of people. I mean, um, Craig, uh, Dr. Craig Marshall, our, our, our Pro Vice Chancellor earlier was talking about the fact that, you know, Afghan students had taught one of our English students a, a new song whilst in China. And that really sums up the diverse nature of university. You really join a global village. You're coming to Lincoln, but you're becoming part of a global village. And thanks to Darren, who's moved us on, our producer. And here you really get a sense, again, as to what the campus is like and also a sense of how embedded we are in the heart of the city and also how green the city is. It's, it's a wonderful place to be. And that building down on the left, that's where Emma and I are normally resident uh, mm -hmm. when we're on campus. And that's a really good overview, isn't it? I'm just conscious that um, those people that are waiting for admissions, we will get to Philip up in a couple of moments. We just want to sort of go through with Mark's, his actual sort of journey. Um, and we've got some photographs of Mark as an actual University of Lincoln student. How embarrassing. <laughs> no, bless you for sharing. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh and dear. You're, and you're a siren there, Mark. Tell us where this is and what you're actually doing. You look like you're on Radio 1. 
<laughs> I, I felt like it at the time yeah um so <laughs> this was quite an important photo to me so um I'm in one of the radio suites and there are quite a few in the uh, media building so I'm in one of those I asked um some people who were working on my project with me to take a photo because it was our very last shift in there getting all of the practical stuff done ready for our our big first project to hand in just before Christmas um so it's quite a special moment um but as you can see it's very technical you can just see on the screen there maybe some of the software so I think for that one we had to get um I think it was a half hour hour long radio show together pre-recorded and then it, it was assessed um and we had to write you know how we found it and what we learned etc um but yeah that was one of my first projects being finished so that's why I gave it I'm a very, thumbs up. I'm very key that students at Lincoln you know it isn't all theory um if that makes right. sense you know we you know you just sort of said that was one of your sort of projects pre-Christmas very practically based um mm, so we mm. feel that's a real good element that you've sort of pulled out there yeah who, yeah lots of workshops who are these um <laughs> so uh starting from the right you've got adam oliver and niall so um i pretty much made friends with these guys in the first year of university they were on the same course they were doing that project as well with me and we just stuck with each other quite a lot throughout uni we you know we hung out outside of university as well but again, um, I really like this photo because we had to give a pitch presentation um, to some of the academics and we were meant to be joined by someone from um, quite a popular radio station as well, from who I think works in, well, did work in the branding uh, department and it was a branding based pitch. So um, yeah, that was one of our first pitches that we had just finished. We were really happy, all suited and booted and we just obviously took the opportunity to have a photo. Um, so do you want me to explain no. you best explain Mark <laughs> <laughs> so um, this was a Thanksgiving meal um, and you know I keep in touch with everyone in this photo but basically I wanted to bring this one to your attention because uh, my friends on the left there so Laura and Joss um, they're, they are it sounds cringy but they are pretty much friends for life I actually met Laura um on my open day she was working as an ambassador so she, they are actually a year ahead of me but I we keep in touch we talk every day I spoke to Laura on the phone yesterday just on the phone earlier this week um and they do so much you know with their degree and when they're, they're at uni as well so Joss did media production um he now works um for a company linked to Audible um he recorded Philip Schofield's uh, latest um audio Video, uh, book as well um, Laura worked on um, one of the latest Star Wars films I believe um, she's done some really interesting stuff she studied in the exchange program I think in year one or year two of uh, me media production as well and she went back to work in America afterwards she's got friends in America I've made friends with some of her, her friends in America as well so um, just to really give you an example of the kind of people that you make friends with and, and the opportunities that open up to you really at uni. Um, but yeah, that was a great time. <laughs> um, so this one um, is my very first night at university. So I we'd all moved into our apartment that day. I think there was a couple of others that lived with us, but they weren't there. Um, I don't know where they were at that time with the photo, um, but it looks like we've known each other for ages. So, you know, we linked. Oh. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? We linked on Facebook um, and chatted because we found each other through um, the accommodation page at the time. Um, and yeah, it was just great. So we just moved in that day to university. We all made friends really, really quickly and, and went on the first night out. And just going back to, was it Becky's comment earlier? Um, it is really easy to make friends because you've got to remember that you're all in the same position. So we were all somewhere new. We were all in a new flat. We didn't know anyone. So um everyone was so willing to make friends and it was probably the easiest experience for me in terms of making friends so i know we've not got not got much time so this is um a photo of my accommodation in lincoln courts um i think it was court 10 <laughs> can't remember but i took that photo because um i put a little christmas tree up i made it festive um and you'll find when you go to university that christmas starts early basically but that was quite an important um christmas for me because i'd never been abroad at that point um and i you know i had a passport i, I used that for my student finance application and I decided to go and see my friend who was at university as well on a, the Erasmus exchange program in Amsterdam. Um, so I actually traveled. I know it's not far, but I traveled there on my own, you know, going out of the country for the first time um, all by myself. And I just 
felt like that was quite a big moment for me and something that probably happened more because I built that confidence up during university and making lots of friends, etc. So I really wanted to make sure that I included that one as well. Um, and again, because she was at university, I was at university and, you know, that's a new opportunity there. I met loads of people on her course in Amsterdam from different parts of, of the world as well. So it was just another opportunity that arised because of university. Sorry, I know I'm speaking quick. <laughs> no, no, you're doing so well, Mark. And I, I'm sorry. I wish we had loads more time. But the yeah. thing that you made me want to mention is the Friends for Life um, initiative that we do at Lincoln. So from the moment you applied to Lincoln, we, we put you on something called Friends for Life. And uh, we've even had a, a marriage as a result of Friends for Life now. But basically, we put you in touch with people with similar interests, people in similar accommodation, people on your program, and we put you in touch well in advance of you actually starting. So you can start to get to know people and make friends before you actually join. And sometimes people get together before they come to Lincoln. So they actually have an idea of uh, the people they're going to know when they're here. I do apologize. It's our 11 o'clock warning for anybody that wants to go across to their live subject sessions, then please go now and you will find those sessions um, listed on the on the web page. Um, so yes, that is 11 o'clock. So thank you for that, Ellie. Um, and we realise we are probably 10 minutes behind on our schedule um, to meet Philippa. So we are going to go to, you can watch all of this afterwards. So please go to your subject sessions and you can watch us afterwards. Before we go, can I just ask the colleges who are watching, please, can you answer the questions that Emma and Mark and I haven't had time to answer? There are lots of lots of questions about accommodation, about whether or not people are waiting for offers and, and just questions about at the application process. If you can just go through colleges and answer those, I'd be really, really grateful. Thank you. And while saying thank you, can we also say a massive thank you to Mark? He's really shared part of his life uh, with us there. And I think that was so interesting. I really loved it. So thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. Part. It was the it best part of my fun. life. So <laughs> thank you. Take care. No, it was very obviously the best part of, of Mark's life. And that came across really well, didn't it? And what a life. Gosh, people have gone on to work on Spielberg movies and, oh, oh no, Star Wars, Star Wars. Oh, it's Star Wars. So And the Philip Schofield um, audible book. I can remember Mark telling me that um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. How lovely. We've got some great alumni, haven't we? I know. We've got alumni who worked on Eflin Ernest, uh, on The Snowman and the Snow Dog the Batman films, I mean, it's amazing what our alumni do and who really are changing the world. Im Imogen always comes to mind, Imogen Napier, who's um, now a, a, a research scholar, I think it's for National Geographic. And yeah. She's doing doing international research on microplastics and, and changing the world. And uh, our students amaze me. I, I'm so astounded by, by where they are around the world and what they do. Now, Emma, you keep trying to move us on, and I'm so sorry because I keep denying us. And it's time, late but uh, but perfect, uh, to welcome Philippa. And I'll hand over to you for the formal introduction, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Philippa. I, I, I realise <laughs> we've been waiting in the backstage for us. Um, so, Philippa, is, this is Philippa Hill, and Philippa, you are pretty much you head up um, our admissions department, don't you? So. Um, a lot of people are, are sort of really anxious to get their offers at the moment, as, she, as I'm pretty certain you are, you know, it's sort of an anxious time. So I think this year everybody's even a little bit more anxious than, mm -hmm. than normal. Um, so first and foremost, do you want to sort of just um, reassure all of those applicants that have applied that we will get to them? Is that Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like you say, Emma, I think, um, you know, we are working our way through all the applications that we've received so far. And, you know, the team are really, you know, conscious of the fact that there's probably quite a lot of anxious applicants out there who are worried about the current situation and what's going to happen. So, yes, just to reassure applicants that we are working our way through their applications um, and I think you, you alluded to it earlier about the deadline, the 15th of January deadline moving, um, obviously to help teachers 
applicants um, to get those applications in by um, the new date of the 29th of January. Um, I mean, just to obviously reassure applicants as well that that deadline isn't. It's a deadline. It's it's a deadline for us to um, consider applications on an equal basis. So um, it, a lot of our programs still remain open after that deadline. The only programs that may close are those that are very are competitive, such as paramedic science, midwifery, and those sort of programs where we receive a very very high number of applications for a small number of places. So it's just to reassure applicants that yes, there is that deadline there, but we will still consider applications after that date um, if our programs are still open. And do you want to just um, go back to anybody watching that hasn't started their application yet, which, you know, we're, we're, which is why we're here really today to ensure that um, everybody has equal information. And, you know, as they're not in schools at the moment, they probably can't be asking their head of sixth form or uh, their careers lead quite as easily. So if you just want to sort of very briefly explain what an applicant needs to do. We, we seem to have a few um, mature students as well on the chat, so maybe they need to just have the reassurance that applications are open to everybody. Yeah, so um, for all full-time undergrad applications, um, they need to submit through UCAS, um, as they may be aware. Um, so when considering putting an application in, um, you can choose up to five, you can make five choices on your application. So that's the first thing to consider. Uh, and obviously, you know, this is one of the reasons we're here today is to show you our university and what we have to offer and what a, a wonderful city, I think, that we've already shown to everybody already and, and what a brilliant place Lincoln is to come and study. Um, but yes, yeah, so applicants need to consider um, what type of university they want to go to, the type of course they want to study. And then they have five choices that they can. I mean, they don't have to make, don't have to use all those five choices. We do see applications from people who just want to come to Lincoln and that's it. They don't want to go anywhere else, which is absolutely fine. Um, and the five choices can be to five different universities for the same course, or they can, if they want to, use all of those five choices at one university. It's entirely up to them. Um, so that's the first thing to consider. And obviously, you know, we, we do advise applicants to think carefully about their choices as well and it's not just about the course type of course they're studying it's also about where they're living and what sort of experience they want from that university life if you like and as Mark alluded to you know there's so many things that you can do at university and I think it's important for applicants to consider that and um, you know the experience of a 18 year old coming to university to that of a mature, more mature applicant um, coming to university may differ, um, you know, um, in terms of maybe social life and different activities that they might take part in. So I think it's really important to consider that aspect of it as, as, as probably as important as the type of course you're studying as well. There's a really um, important question, I think, from John um on on here he's any hints for applying as a mature student specifically around the personal statement so it is um i think it's it's really relevant that obviously you know if you're a, a an a-level student studying in the sixth form then they will have probably already had pre-christmas a bit of support on this personal statement but of course as a mature student um what sort of help and advice would you offer um, I think in terms of a personal statement, I think for mature applicants, they've probably got, um, it's likely that they will have um, a bit of work experience um, and a bit of um, life experience. So I think from from a more mature applicant, I think, you know, we would like to see um, some sort of, um, you know, explanation about what they've been doing um, during their work life and what sort of work experience they have um, and just pure life experience because I think that's that's just as important as their academic ability in terms of, you know, us seeing what sort of an applicant and potential student they could be. Um, so, yes, from a mature applicant point of view, the personal statement just to focus on their life experience, I think, would be the advice. Yeah. There is 
on the website, John, you'll find a talk that we did a while ago on how to write your personal statement, which I think will give you a few hints and tips on how to approach it. Because I know that as, a, as an older person coming in to do this, it can be a bit a bit discombobulating in knowing where to start. And John, I also have to say, what a fantastic picture you've got there. <laughs> that is so cool. So yes, if you'll find that personal statement uh, talk that, that we did on, on our University of Lincoln website. And so do have a look at that. It's only a short one, isn't it, Emma? I think it was a short yeah, one. It just gives real good sort of overview of um, sort of a couple of students' experience and what they added into their application, their personal statement. Um, mm -hmm. It's just sometimes having a bit of um, other, a bit of guidance, isn't it, as to what to put in there and, and not worry about it too much. Um, but, but we realise that you want to show off yourself in the very best light don't we but not to panic with a mature student we do get no, mature students. definitely, definitely not question from abby there she's a student at another university that but she'd like to change to lincoln she wants to transfer any mm -hmm. tips or hints for her philippa or some advice on where to where to find out more um, I think for Abby, uh, yes, if you want to transfer courses to into, uni into Lincoln, then it'd be best to contact us directly to find out more information about that. So um, I don't know if we can put up our admissions um, email address there at all. So admissions at lincoln.ac.uk, Abby, if you want to get in contact with us um, and we can talk, talk to you about how you can transfer um, to Lincoln. Um, but if you want to start in... September or October, um, then it would be a case of um, sending an application in in the normal way. Um, but what we would advise is that you, you, like I said, if you contact us and give us information about the course that you're currently studying at the, your current university, then we can see if that matches with the curriculum that you want to transfer into. Um, if you want to start again from the first year, and um, then that would be a completely new application. But if you come in, if you're wanting to transfer onto year two, for example, then we then we can do that if if we've got the right information from you. And what's really great about Philippa and the team is that they are so kind and so friendly. So please don't be afraid to to give a call. I, oh, no, I just the nicest people that you could ever hope to speak to. Um, I, I can say that as someone whose stepson came to Lincoln and and mm -hmm. got everything wrong and filled in all the wrong forms and did everything wrong. And gosh, the team were amazing in terms of providing all the support to help him get it right, find the right accommodation, find the right course. And you, you were so kind, Philippa. I mean, everyone went to so much effort. Is that a specific a sort of ethos of the team? Yeah, I mean, I think that's just that's just the way we are. But yes, I think um, we, you know, we we've got a lot of experienced people within our team now who have um, been through this process for a number of years. So they know the cycle inside out and back to front and upside down. So you know, any question that you have, please do contact us because they will be more than happy to help. And um, either by telephone, uh, we have we have got our telephone lines open. Um, the team are working from home still, but they're taking phone calls, um, email or any any other format that we have that you can contact us by. Please do. And we'll be more than happy to help with any questions that you have. Is it worth, um, just, oh, sorry. Yeah. Is it worth at this point just reinforcing that obviously students are likely to have or applicants are likely to have further questions beyond today? Oh, and yes. We have um, we've got a live link up on Monday evening. Um, mm -hmm between half past four and half past six. But also, Philippa, we have all very quickly this week adapted. And um, do you want to sort of talk about the run up, the week of the run up to the 29th of January and the support that the admissions team have put in for? Yep, so um, we do try and put in a bit of an additional support, support in terms of admissions leading up to that January deadline. Obviously that's shifted now to later on in the month. So as Emma said, that we quickly adapted our dates and changed our dates to to align with that so we are planning on uh, running some live admissions chats um the week commencing the leading up to the 29th <laughs> yeah, it's one on the 21st isn't there so one the week before yeah. and then i think it's 
I think from memory, it's the 25th, 26th, 27th, or whatever that might be, that yeah. week, four till six. Yeah, right? so each day, each of those days, we'll be offering some additional admission support leading up to that deadline. Um, I think um, the dates and times will be advertised on our website. Um, so if you're interested in or if you've got any questions uh, specifically for our admissions team, then please do um, check the website for those dates and times and we'll be we'll be there waiting for your questions. I was just going to pick up on Wessel, Wessel Herberway, which is the best name ever, who's yeah. asked two really good questions. When is the best time to apply for 2021-22? And also, how do you apply for the student loan? Um, so, um, so the first part of that question, when to apply. So you can apply now. Um, you could apply from September last year um, for entry into 2021. So. Um, there's still plenty of time to apply and um, obviously if you're looking at like I said before um, applying to one of the more competitive courses you perhaps need to apply and um, need to consider putting your application in sooner uh, ahead of that 29th of January deadline um, but as I also said um, there will be courses that will be open beyond that date so there's still plenty of time to apply um, and at the moment as it stands the application the main application deadline for 2021 entry is uh, is always the end of June. Um, sorry, end of end of June. Yes, <laughs> just end of June. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many dates flying yeah. around at the moment. Um, so yes, there's still plenty of time to apply. But obviously, if you are, like I said, if you're considering applying for one of those competitive courses, then you need to start putting in an application now ahead of that January deadline. And um, before we move on, can we just help? Uh, can we just help Emily Smith? Because Emily Smith is having a bit of a, a panic trying to find the criminology talk that's going on now. Okay. Emily, you need to go on to the University of Lincoln website and click on the virtual open day link. Darren might put that up at the bottom. Yes, thank you, Darren. Just follow that that address there, that web address and scroll down and you will find the criminology talk and you can join it and you can start from the beginning or you can join it live, whichever you prefer. So hopefully that will help you, Emily. Sorry, Philippa, the second oh. part of the question was just about how people applied for their loan. Um, student loan, um, yeah, so um, you need to apply for, if you go onto our website, there's information about how to apply uh, for student loans. Um, and you apply through the student, student loans company for your student loan. And I believe that the date for that opens in March to be able to start applying for your loan. Um, so, but I believe there is further information on our website on how to do that. Um, so please um, yeah. refer yourself to that if you need some further information. But again, if you want to give us a call or pop us an email, if you're not sure about what to do, then please do get in touch with us. Um, I'm going to ask if you don't mind. It's a really strange year. It's it's the most challenging year, I think, for mm -hmm. young people, you know, definitely in my lifetime in terms of the disruption to study. Is the, the, sorry about that. That's Benson. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. What I was saying, having to work from home uh, during lockdown, it brings mm -hmm. all sorts of challenges. But for young people, they're perhaps not so sure in terms of what's happening with their exams. What would be the top tips or the top advice that you would give at this time to try and reassure young people who are perhaps uh, are unsure what to do and 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 what to think at this time? Um, yes, it is a challenging time. I think it's challenging for all of us um, working from home. You've got all sorts of distractions. <laughs> uh, luckily, my cat hasn't wandered in and meowed at me um, today. Um, but yeah, I think my advice is, you know, um, I think we've just got to embrace where we are at the moment and try and, um, you know, in terms of looking at university and what your future plans are, I think, you know, even more so now you've got to really think about what the future is going to be for you and how you're, how you want to map that out. And um, it is really difficult you know we're all we're all facing numerous challenges um but i think you know do your research if you want to come to university really do your research keep up to date with anything that's going on in terms of you know online teaching and how universities are delivering their teaching um because obviously we are living in a very dynamic world at the moment and it changes on a daily basis so 
I think you know the advice is if you if you're wanting to come to Lincoln, just keep keep a sight of what's going on on our website and how we are delivering things. And you know we've learned so much this year in terms of how we deliver programs remotely and a bit of teaching in class and then shifting it. You know it's changed so much. I think you know I think it's just a case of keeping your knowledge aware of what's what's going on in universities and how they are dealing with the situation I think. Thank you. Um, one final question that we had very early on that I answered um, Philippa and, uh, and it's a part of the application cycle almost. Um, we had a student, um, I can't remember if it was Becky or not, um, who had was sitting with a conditional offer and was unsure if that meant that she was then going to have an interview or, or was that her offer? So if you could just very quickly sort of, um, very quickly, just sort of explain what what sort of, what the process is. We, they send the application, they hear back from us and what sort of the offer may be or, or what the, the journey might be for the applicant. Okay, I think I was here when you, you were asked that question. So I think you've answered it perfectly if I'm being honest so if you know they've received a conditional offer so that's it that's their offer so I think as you said and um, they just need to check the conditions of that offer um, and oh there it was it was from Becky and um, so yes Becky if you have a conditional offer then that means that you don't there's nothing else you need to do other than meet those conditions so um, just a case of checking what that offer is and you cast track uh, and making sure you're aware of that um, if you are if you are applying to a course that does require an interview, we will notify you of that, and you will get again. UCAS Track will be a good place to check um, the status of your application in terms of if you've been invited to an interview and what the outcome of that interview is. Um, so yes, conditional offer, absolutely fine. Nothing else you need to do at the moment other than meet the conditions of your offer. And before you leave us, Philippa, can I ask you? What's your favourite thing to do around Lincoln? What you know, because obviously people can't come to Lincoln at the moment, and we're trying to give them a sense of of what Lincoln's like as a place to live and study. And what's your favourite thing about Lincoln? Um, so I've lived here for about eleven years now. So, and I just can't get enough of looking at that cathedral. I think again, Emma, yourself, you talked about it earlier. You can drive for miles away, and then you come back. And it's like a home in Pigeon. You come towards it and you can see it on the hill there. It stands so proud on the hill. It's it's amazing. You just can't get enough of it. Um, and I just love that area of the city. It's beautiful. Um, the obvious things about walking around. I mean, I'm a keen runner and I, I've, I, I do quite weirdly enjoy running up Steep Hill when I'm fit enough. <laughs> so um, it is quite a good challenge if you're, you're up for a challenge uh, running up Steep Hill. Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, I love the city. I love the fact that it's not overwhelming. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big city fan. So Lincoln is perfect. It's, it's like we've said before. It's everything's easy, accessible. Um, in terms of the campus, walking into town at lunchtime, um, to grab your Marks and Spencer sandwich <laughs> when you can. Um, I just, yeah, it's just. I think I just like the fact that it's, it feels like a. A community that's not overwhelming I think. It's small and safe and it's such a friendly place I think I moved to Lincoln from London and uh, initially I was quite quite perturbed at how every single person in the city spoke to me and asked me if I was okay <laughs> when I was or if I was lost when I was obviously lost because I was new <laughs> And I I couldn't believe how quickly the city takes new people, students to its heart and, mm. and makes it part. And I think what we find is when students come here, they just don't want to leave a bit like mm. Mark. They they want to stay. And yeah, yeah, I think what you say is is brilliant. It's a lovely place to be. Yeah. I think that's probably all of our questions. Are you, okay. yeah. Thank you. Jennifer, for thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. You've yeah, you really really put our own hands, aren't they, until 12 o'clock to answer yes. any questions that people have as well. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, they're still here answering questions. Yes. And that's great. And Emma, a quick question for you. Uh, Saffron's saying, where can I find Unibuddy? Unibuddy, again, if you go on to, um, thank you, Darren. 
you go onto our website forward slash VOD and you scroll down and the information says chat to our students. Now there is a mix of students and academics on there today. So um, just search, see which subject it is. If it's a student question you've got from a subject, then ask them and they're there and they're there until 12 o'clock. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Philippa. Have a Thank lovely you. rest of the weekend. Thanks yes, for you Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Philippa. Oh, that was so good. Philippa is so kind. The team are so wonderful. So please, if you do have questions, I'm going to pick up on a question that came in earlier. Um, it was from Stefan Codd. Stefan, you're a mature student. You've drafted a personal statement and you're asking if you can send your personal statement to us. Now, we do get tens of thousands of applications, so we do find it challenging to help everyone, but I can see that Emma is nodding. I am. Um, we do want to have, you know, we, we do support um, students or applicants with their sort of personal statements. So whilst we can't possibly sort of give you and write your personal statement for you, what we can do. And if it was a live open day today, then I have been in the personal statement talk and sort of had a, a quick overview of your personal statement and can offer a few tips and guidance so Stephen what I'm going to do because you've asked the question if you email um, us on inquiries at lincoln.ac.uk or actually also go on to um, the chat Gareth is there working today um, so Gareth is is my sort of most mature, um, most experienced member of the team that would be able to read that for you. So if you can go onto the chat um, and sort of say, hi, Gareth, are you able to sort of have a look at this? And then he will pick that up for you today. I'm absolutely certain he will. Thank you, Emma. And that's really kind of you and Gareth. And a big hi to Gareth, who's working today. He's uh, another really, really amazing guy who knows so much about higher education. And advice and guidance and it's time to introduce uh, one of our most popular speakers um uh, we're gonna be he's gonna take us live onto campus uh, and uh, we always get loads of questions during the year about accommodation because obviously a key part of coming to university is knowing where you're going to live and what what it's like to live on campus at the University of Lincoln and we have loads and loads of on-campus accommodation so I'm going to ask Darren to bring in the hero of the hour the man who knows everything there is to know about accommodation Ben Ball lovely to see you morning Ben morning uh, Ali and uh, Emma um, I, I, I'm on campus because um, um, we still have uh, around about a thousand students in residence so uh, our day-to-day -day still continues, um, and so we've got lots of team members around making sure that everything's still working okay for everybody. Uh, Brilliant. I was just going to say, Darren, would you mind making me and Emma really small and making Ben really big so we can benefit from the fact that he's on campus and, uh, and see the amazing facilities that you've got there? That's yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm in our Signet Wharf building at the moment, which is in the centre of our campus. Whilst you can't see, I've got the student services department just uh, uh, across from me there. Bridge House, where law is delivered. Um, our Alfred Tennyson building, Stephen Langton building, are literally outside of this window. Um, so right in the centre of campus, and, and and with the sort of challenges that we have with um, with the lockdown, then being in a bedroom that's active this is an empty apartment that we've got um so we've been able to just get in here to be able to sort of say we've got places with storage all of the rooms in signet wharf happen to be en suite um and they're all three quarter beds in here that people as we saw when we were talking to mark people can make their own mark on the room uh, and whilst we've set this up as a demonstration room um, there are lots of individual things that people can do to make it like their own home style um, and create their own experience in their own bedroom. And, and just to explain why you're on campus, Ben, and, and why um, myself and Emma aren't. 
Well, we've got, so I'm considered, as, as Darren is saying there, to be an essential worker, as quite a number of my colleagues are. So we provide a 24-7 service to all of our accommodations that we manage. Um, so if we have problems or students need support, we are further supported by our residential wardens team. So if anybody has um, a slight concern or problem that they they need to lean on somebody, then our private war, our, our residential warden team um, are a great point of contact. And they're here for us to be able to signpost people to as well. So we're here dealing with some reception issues. People, the mail is still coming. Uh, we still get block drains and switches that don't work or something might break. And our um, support team are here to be able to make sure that everything continues to work as we would expect it to work. And I'm just going to make the point, actually, that you work 24-7. So, you know, if, if there are things that, that are difficult for students, we we get out and support them straight away. And if it's not you, then it's our security team who are always on hand. And I think the reason I mention that is it always impresses me how quick and responsive your team is, Ben. Yeah, uh, well, it, it's part of understanding that, that you know, it, it's it's a lifestyle, it's a change. Young people move away from home. Um, we're not actually in, it is the official term in loco parentis, but we're here to support. We're here to make sure it goes okay. It's a difficult time right now, as, as you've all said through all of the other talks, that, you know, we're all learning to live with this new environment. Um, and in that sense, we've, you know, we have to support lots of students in lots of different ways because they're not out in their academic areas every day of the week as they might normally be. Um, they're not being able to socialize as they would normally do. Uh, and for lots of different reasons, we need to support that um, every hour of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, are we at this point... Anybody that's watching, do you think that they would like to know how we apply? What's the process of applying for our, our amazing accommodation that we have? So let me go through that. So the folder, if you have a, a firm uh, or a conditional or firm offer from the University of Lincoln, you are able to make an application for accommodation. Um, there are uh, the application process is open right now. Um, and you can register once you've made us that confirmation and follow the links through there. We have an informative web uh, the web page um, which Darren might put up for us, which is accommodation.lincoln.ac.uk, which gives you a walkthrough of how to make an application. But once you've registered, you make an application with four choices so that we can try and manage your um, second and third and fourth choices if we need to and we have a plentiful supply of accommodation for people to choose from we have just under under our management just under um, as we finish with a new development ready for for September um, October of 21 we will have around about three and a half thousand bedrooms surrounding the Brayford Pool campus um, and in general the great majority are en suite um, which is a big important thing for a lot of people uh, but there are still issues that we try to make sure as you see all of that information um, affordability and there are a particular option that is now called value um, where people can particularly make a choice from there if budget is an issue as they make their application but as I said earlier I'm here in Signet Wharf um, single study bedrooms uh, en suite 442 rooms, um, generally in apartments of 10 to 12. This one happens to be in our smaller, one of our smaller apartments there, um, but this is the kind of setup that people would get. I'm sat right next door to a double wardrobe. I'm at the desk working station as it, as, as it is, uh, and then kitchens and lounges are there. But on that um, accommodation, .lincoln.ac.uk, you will see an awful lot more information and pictures and images uh, of our, our developments. Can you just we, tell us though, Ben, before you move on to talk about the developments, which would be really interesting. So so everyone has a bedroom and in, in the one you're in, you've got your own ensuite sort of bathroom as well, but then you share a sort of kitchen living room. It, it, so basically you, you have friends that you make in in that area is, is that kind of right is that the most straightforward way to describe yeah, so, it so in in major our accommodation options range from 
three bedroom apartments up to 23 bedroom apartments and all of the social spaces are set relevant to the size of people who would live in and share an apartment we also have studio rooms available as well studios that are set up in apartments as well so if there are people who have had experience of independent living or for very many reasons because it might be medical it might be personal choice it might be part of their their study uh, process it might be simply because you want a quieter environment that studio options are a consideration to solve with that where you would then have independent living on your own um, but yes in general you're in a shared apartment when i say 10 to 12 rooms or six or eight rooms as it would be in lincoln courts then that's the number of people that would be sharing a kitchen in that sense a kitchen lounge diner in that sense and we do have loads of accommodation at, at lincoln and quite a lot of brand new accommodation as well or, or relatively new accommodation so i'm going to ask you if you don't mind in your own inimitable way to talk us through the range of accommodation that is available here okay so do it in one breath uh well now here we go so we're, we're, we're at signet war four years old actually uh just down from that is our main or our original student village as the university set off um and in that sense we um have just over a thousand study bedrooms so literally directly on the campus we have uh with 179 high street to the east of our campus uh we have uh, 1800 bedrooms effectively on campus next door to academic buildings just surrounding us and just off campus locations we have viking house just a uh, 270 bedrooms in that location again all en suite uh, two minutes walk to the center of the university uh, we have the gateway which is immediately opposite the university car park again two minutes walk and you're into the Isaac Newton building where you, you guys would normally be doing your presentations and we'd all be walking around. Uh, 179 High Street, as I've mentioned, which is next door to the Sarah Swift and David Chiddick buildings, 301 bedrooms there. Um, again, all en suite with some studio options there. The gateway is mainly studio options. A little bit further down the road um, as you're passing, as we would know it, Morrison's and um, and some other retail outlets. Um, we have Valentine Court, uh, which is 469 ensuite rooms in a housing style development. Really, really pretty, really, really relaxing to be there uh, in a courtyard setting. The images that we've been able to take from there are really stunning and, and it's going down really well. It does offer a little bit of car parking there as well, which is a challenge in Lincoln. We then have uh, in completion, all the first part has now been delivered to us, uh, St. Mark's Student Village, which again is effectively opposite the University Car Park, um, and that will, for uh, October 21, total bring us just over a 1,000 single-study ensuite bedrooms for our students. And then there's a further phase of that that will come forward in 2022. And, and within that... Within Sorry, Ben, I was just going to come in because because Wessel's asked a really good question, as has Cassie. They both asked the same question. With accommodation, are you able to apply to share accommodation with a friend or with friends from school? Yes. Uh, when you get an offer of accommodation, so it's very helpful if both people, sometimes there is more than two people, um, if both or all of the people make the same application list. So that even if we have to go to a second choice or a third choice, that's covered. But when you get your accommodation offer, which would be in August time, then when you accept it, you will have an opportunity to state people's details of who you might want to be allocated with. Now, we can't promise to do 100% of all everybody's requests because they're sometimes very different and different for a lot of reasons. But we try to cover as many as we possibly can. So you can do that at the point where you accept the accommodation offer, which is generally in August. And B N is saying, how early should we apply for accommodation? And someone else wanted to know what was the deadline for accommodation. So just to double check that one. We've already opened our booking process, which you can link off the university website and the accommodation page is there. Um, and you will be able to um, start your choices. If you've been confirmed at uh, 
unconditional or conditional, you will be able to make an application for accommodation uh, now onwards. So if you haven't made those confirmations, when you do that, within two or three days, there's one or two little updates that needs to be done. You will then be able to make an application for accommodation. And what that says is that, you know, you can make, the earlier you make an application, the more choices you will have is the real thing. There is as such no deadline because we will continue to support students all the way through to intake mm. and after. So we're always supporting students all the way through. The deadline to be aware of is the 1st of September, which is a guarantee deadline of if you make an application and have confirmed the university, um, if you make an application for accommodation by the 1st of September, you will be guaranteed a halls of residence style accommodation from somewhere within our portfolio. So the, the 1st of um, September is a guarantee deadline, but we continue to take applications and make allocations all the way up to intake in October. And that's a really good point, actually, because Victoria D is asking, yeah. are any accommodation full for September? And do we have to go to accommodation service for private halls? And I think the point you're making is that there, there is loads and loads of accommodation, really, isn't it, Ben? Yes, we, you, will, you will make application for university managed halls through the university website um, in that sense. Uh, as far as I'm aware, all of the options are still available. Um, one of the reasons I'm here right now is that I am um, head our operations team and, and it's operations that need to keep things moving. So some of our admin team um, are doing the working from home part. Um, so, but as far as I am aware, I've not seen any notices all options are available to apply for still. Um, no, that's um, um, I think oh, yeah. the point of Victoria was, um, will accommodation service help? And I think you made that point, Ben, that you work, you work round the clock and I've got evidence of this because I have, I have personally come to you with lots of sort of inquiries over the years and you will support and, and um, assist students in any form of sort of accommodation won't you all the way through so that support service uh, you know just like we were talking with Philippa you know the admissions team and the accommodation team just absolutely go above and beyond for our students from application process all the way through. Yeah and Darren's putting the notes in below so our email address and our information resource as the website um, you know, just email us. There's lots of things that can happen. People will lose their registration ID, their university ID. Just email us in or even the admissions team there. Uh, and we get lots of different questions about people's preferences and uncertainty and, and all of that kind of thing. It, it is just the best thing to ask the question if you're not certain about it. Um, we'd rather spend more time trying to give people information on which way a particular building faces for the sunrise and all that kind of thing, um, if it's a helpful. Um, we've got lots of information within the website that, that, that your teams have helped us develop that have the pop-up notices of how far something is away from something else. Um, so we've tried to make it as detailed as we possibly can, especially being in these times now where, you know, the one nice thing that I, I thought about today was that normally we'd be running an open day and I'd be stood under the flyover near Signet Wharf and that would be pretty cold. Um, <laughs> this morning. <laughs> The downside to that is that we can't let people do that physical part. But off that website that's going underneath there now, accommodation.lincoln.ac.uk, there is a link to our um, social media sites, which has a lot of walkthroughs. So we introduce certain buildings ready for intake where people have already had allocations, but they, you see an individual walk through the building, walk into an apartment, actually open the fridges and the cooker doors and the bathroom doors and things like that. Those are available on that resource there. Can I ask you, Ben, because uh, it's so hard to know which accommodation to choose. I mean, uh, it, it's a really difficult thing to do. Which accommodation would you choose if you were a relatively social 17, 18-year-old uh, looking to choose somewhere quite close to the uni that's really, really nice? I, I, I'm going to I'm going to take this in two two ways. So I often on an actual open day get asked by families, you know, that very question. So which do I find is the is the most practical room 
to be a student in. It's actually our Lincoln Court's non en suite. Why is that? There'll be a load of people listening saying, shock horror, what does he mean, non en suite? We're We're not sharing bathrooms and things like that. But actually, there's more space in the room. I get more space. I get the same living space with six people. Um, I get the same services. It's actually a bit cheaper. And therefore, I am now. That's my value option to say that that's where the value is, let's say. The great majority of our rooms, probably certainly over 90%, are ensuite rooms. So it's only a few rooms that are not ensuite. I think we still find that Signet Wharf is very, very popular because we created some long, narrow kitchens with a breakfast bar in there. And because it's a tall building, as we move around work on an evening, we can see the lights of the kitchens and the socialization that goes on in there. But we've moved that further forward, both with Viking House and 179 High Street, with large social spaces for large groups of people. Some of our apartments even have separate TV rooms. Um, you know, we've, we've tried to, in the developments that we've done over the past four years, we've tried to come up with a model that is actually suitable to all needs for all people um, and then provide a range of choices. Um, so I suppose with, with all of that and in access to everything, possibly having a shot at the new St. Mark's building, because it's going to be a big site, it's going to be ultimately about 1,300 people living on that site, but it is immediately opposite the university. It's close to Pizza Hut, it's close to McDonald's. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And talking of fun, uh, because we're, we're running a little bit late, I'm going to say a huge thank you, Ben. You and the team are absolutely amazing. You're on site constantly. And Victoria D and everyone else who's got questions, please go on to the website, scroll down. You and the team are there answering questions, I believe, Ben, aren't you? Absolutely. And we'll hang on to use if, if, if the... Um... I don't know what they see from the front end, but I know it is our Slido question and answer type thing. If that happens to close down at midday, then use accommodation at Lincoln. Email us with any question you've got. The team will watch that through the day so we can try and clear everything out and get everybody as much information as they would want. That's really ben, helpful. you really are the best. You're, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Okay. Good luck for the rest of the day. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ben. Bye. Now, we are running a little bit slow, aren't we, Emma? So yeah, we're not very good at our time management, Ellie, are we? We're rubbish. We're rubbish. We really are. And so I probably need to move us on quite quickly. So I'll get you to do the introduction for yes, our next so section. Moving to our final guest of the morning, and that is Abby. So welcome to Abby. Abby is our vice president from the SU, and you look at, after sort of societies, activities, and all, all the sort of really social type bits, Abby, don't you? Along with everything else, I'm sure. But Tell yes. us what your role entails, really. Yeah, definitely. So uh, my role is um, looking after our sports societies and academic societies, but all of our sabbatical officers, um, so there's five of us, our job is to make sure that we support and represent all of our students. Um, so, here they yeah. are, Abby. Here they are. Oh, my God. It's so oh, good to see you. Talk us through who's there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, from the left, we have Amina. She is our Vice President International um, and she um, basically supports all of our international students as well as putting on events for them. Um, and she has something called the International Students Association that international students can get involved in um, to basically connect with other international students. Um, and then myself, and then you have Georgia in the middle. She is our Vice President Education um, and she looks after all of our reps. So we have over 600 reps, um, including school reps um, and college officers. And she also sits on a lot of university committees um, to make sure that um, students are being represented in those. Um, and she has actually recently set up a postgraduate students association, which is very similar in terms of kind of connecting with, um, with other students who are postgrad. And then we have Bailey, who is our um, Vice President Campaigns and Environment, um, and she has the Campaigns Network um, in her kind of remit, um, which covers our LGBT officer, our disabilities officer, our BAME officer, 
um, and our woman's officer as well. Um, and she um, looks at kind of more activism campaigns and things like that on campus. And then we have Lucy, who is our wellbeing and community officer. Um, and she has the wellbeing network um, and the wellbeing champions underneath her, which I think is, especially this year, um, a very, very important role to make sure that all of our students' wellbeing is being supported and looked after. Oh gosh, all of you have been amazing this year. It's amazing the activities that you've put on, the entertainment you've put on, the support you've put on. Uh, can I just ask you, we've had quite a few questions from mature students asking how easy it is to make friends and whether there's a mature student society. Can you tell us a bit about that, Abby? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a mature student society um, and the kind of best way to access that is through the Lincoln SU website and you can find uh, more information about all of our sports societies and academic societies. Um, but yeah, um, yes, the link is um, is there. Fabulous um, work um, so that you can basically go onto the website and have a look at all of our 150 um, activities that you can get involved in. Um, but that specific society is there for mature students to connect with each other um, and I guess share best practice and things like that and whether they're commu community students or not, whether they are on campus um, and how you can kind of make friends and go to events and things together as well. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the other societies that exist? I mean, I know there's Quidditch and I know there's um, there's bobsleigh, which are two of my favourites. But what, what are your favourites and why? Um, so I think what's really good about kind of all of the activities that we have is that there's so much to choose from. Um, in terms of sports, obviously, we have kind of the, the popular sports from like football and netball and rugby and things like that. But also... Um, other sports, more niche sports like snow sports, um, which might be something that you haven't had the opportunity to try if you're at school or at college. Um, competitively as well, like competitive snow sports, I think is really um, exciting. Um, that's one of kind of my favorite um, sports teams that we have, as well as like pole fitness, again, something that um, students might not have tried. And then in terms of societies, um, we have such a range um, from Harry Potter to a book club society um, to I'm Bored Society, which is basically for any students who want to do things that they haven't done before. And then academic societies, we have, I think, over 30 academic societies and they link, with, link in with quite a lot of the schools that we have at the university um, where you can um, have extra study sessions. Um, you have guest speakers and things like that, as well as other events. Um, and we have like law, MedSoc, um, LSFM. Um, so we have just such a, a wide range. But the good thing as well is that if you have an interest that we might not have a society for, um, and the example that I always use is like figure skating, if that's something that you're interested in and we don't currently have that we can help you to set up that student society and that is amazing I, I should ask you about what we're looking at which I know Emma was probably just about to ask yeah, so this is the engine shed um, and this is actually the engine shed this year um, and I think this is during one of our big freshers quizzes which we did um, in October um, but a couple of other things that we held in the engine shed this year which we managed to do um, in line with government guidance and social distancing um, includes like indoor cinemas as well as comedy nights which was really good and I think the one thing that we kind of learned this year was that we needed to be kind of innovative with the things that we wanted to do as well as potentially putting on two sessions in an evening instead of one so that we could fit in all of the students that we needed to fit in um but that's kind of what it, it looked like this year in other years it has been very very busy um i know we have um yeah we have our weekly student night, um, which is Quack. Um, and every week we kind of have different themes and we have um, kind of guest appearances from like Dick and Dom. Um, we had Paul Chuckle come as well. Um, I think we had S Club 3, um, not quite the seven, um, but we had the three come as well, which was which was absolutely fantastic. Um, and every week we have these kind of like Quack themed rubber ducks, which we throw out to students. Um, and for some reason, students loved them. Um, and at about 12 o'clock, um, one o'clock in the morning, we kind of announced that we're gonna throw them out. And then a lot of people come to the front and they're trying to trying to catch them um, because there's a different kind of theme every week. So people want to get like the full collection. Um, and this is a photo from Welcome, Welcome Week again in Freshers last year, not this year, um, but they're the, the sorts of kind of entertaining um, activities that we want to put on for our students during Welcome Week. 
and yeah, you always have a, a really big agenda. I know it was Russell Kane this this year, but you've had amazing people on. Yes, yeah, we have. We really have. There's a photo of people um, trying to catch the dog. <laughs> well, rubber duck there. Yeah, um, and it just, I guess for us, we're obviously excited um, and, and wanting to see this come back um, to the engine shed, but we're just going to have to wait and see uh, what the situation is like. But we're, we're hoping to have um, something along these lines anyway um, for the new academic year, which will be great. Um, but the other things that happen in the engine shed include like live music as well as student events. Um, so I know bookings that we've got coming up and obviously it's dependent on guidance and things like that um but we have becky hill and um, we have the blossoms coming um and i know we've got russell howard coming as well um in 2021 so um this is for, for later on in the year fingers crossed yeah definitely no and i know that that's your friend in that picture there abby yeah. Yeah, I've actually noticed there's a couple of people from netball in that photo. Um, so that they are avid quackers uh, and, they, and they like to go every week. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them in there. And we really need to say we're so lucky. Uh, we have an absolutely huge campus at Lincoln. So there's loads of outdoor space, which has been really great during the COVID restrictions because we've been able to do loads outside and we put up teepees and created new venues. But the engine shed, as well as the other venues you've got, but the engine shed in particular is a massive venue, isn't it, Abby, which is brilliant. Yeah, definitely. And and one thing that we kind of changed with the engine shed this year, um, obviously it's normally venues and things like that um, for events, but we actually changed it into an extra study space for students, um, which was a, just another opportunity for students to be able to come onto campus um, and, and come out of their accommodation to do their um, their teaching and learning, which was really good. And what is this? This looks like a, a commercial sort of fair. Is this part of the Freshers' Fair or something? Yeah, so every year we have um, three fairs and we have the sports fair, the society's fair and the commercial fair. Um, and I absolutely love these because there's so many students who are stood at a table um, and they're committee members for their society or their sport and they're really trying to kind of sell themselves and sell the opportunities that they've got going on to um to students who are walking around um and it's always really good to kind of go along talk to people show an interest in joining um you can find out more information about taster sessions and things like that because a lot of of our sports and societies hold taster sessions within the first couple of weeks usually in kind of the end of um, september october time um for you to go along find out whether you like it or not and then you can join as an official member um, which is really exciting. But yeah, this is a photo of the commercial fair. Um, so every year we get our kind of local businesses in Lincoln to come along so students can find out what's in the area for them. And how easy did you find it to make friends, Abby, when you came to uni? Um, that's a really good question. I think I was extremely lucky um i actually went to netball trials within the first week of being at university um and i got into one of the teams so it was kind of an instant way in um to making a really like big group of friends um because the netball society has like 50 members so that's kind of people that you see three times a week that you're playing with every wednesday and um, going out with on a wednesday night so they kind of become your kind of university family um but then you have the opportunity as well to have friends um in your accommodation um so i lived in courts um and there were six of us and we kind of again bonded straight away and and went out into the events in the first week and then you've also kind of got the group of friends that you make on your course as well so there's three kind of really easy ways of making friends the people that you live with the people that you learn with and then the people that you do your extracurricular activities with whether that's sports and societies or the campaigns network or the well-being network or the isa um there's just so many opportunities for students to make friends and we Two questions. Oh, Sorry, can you, Emma, um, I'll let you do it. Sorry. I'm the same. Um, Becky and Abby have both sort of asked um, questions. Um, Abby, one, Becky has asked, can you, can you join more than one society? And Abby has asked, um, is there a gaming society or esports society? 
Yes, so you can um, join as many sports and societies as you want to. Um, kind of like a personal recommendation, I would say probably two or maybe even three. Um, but you've got to make sure that you can balance the kind of extracurricular activities with your academia as well. Um, but you can, you can join as many as you want to. Um, and definitely recommend if your academic um, kind of study has a society, I would 100% recommend um, joining that. Um, joining a sports team and then joining a society is uh, is, is really, really a good way but you can join more than one um, and you can join them all through um, the Lincoln Student Union website um, or when you come onto campus you can um, you can join them at the reception as well um, and then the question about gaming yes we do have a gaming society I think we also have a gaming development society so um, a group of students who are actually interested in making games instead of just playing them um, I think we had a Super Mario Society. I think we've got a Nintendo Switch Society. Um, so loads of different ones, all based around the same thing. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, and an eSports Society as well. Gosh, that's brilliant. Now, we didn't comment on the golfing picture there. I know that you were so proud that you brought a golf set, um, which uh, and it was so popular. Everyone loved golf. Yeah, I personally love crazy golf. And I think that um, Lincoln is uh, missing out not having somewhere that does crazy golf. Um, so the fact that we managed to get that in Freshers Week absolutely made my time. I uh, managed to do that, which was which was really good. And I think it again, like um, I said, it was a really good way this year to find out other ways that we can make students do things together, um, being more innovative. So um, not just with the crazy golf, but we created like cycle tours and bike rides um, and um, like walking tours and things like that. So um, if that's something that we potentially hadn't think, thought about doing before, this is definitely something that we'll continue doing, um, even if the situation is um, better in September and October. I do think that's something that we'll keep doing because it was really good for student engagement. No, that's great. And uh, this is one of the pre pre COVID quizzes, I think, isn't it? Yeah. So I think we had like one like one thousand two hundred people at that quiz. Um, and I remember talking to my family and saying, oh, I'm hosting a quiz tonight. And they were like, oh, that's great. How many people are going to be there? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, like a thousand. And they were like, what? <laughs> How are you going to do that? Um, but we were allowed to have a we were allowed to have, have a pint before we did it. So I think that helped. <laughs> But it was really I'm so sorry about my clock, everyone. Uh, it, it tells us that we're late. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got a good question coming as well. Juliet, Juliet says, can you live on campus after the first year? And I'll, I'll answer that one. Yes, you can, Juliet. You can. Uh, we do have lots and lots of accommodation at the University of Lincoln. So so you can. And the great thing is you are you are right in the heart of everything. So it's literally less than a five minute walk to go to the outdoor cinema screening. And I was trying to figure out what this was. I is it Mia? Ah, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're we're a big fan of Mamma Mia at the Student Union. So I think oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we did. I couldn't figure that out originally. Yeah. It was driving me mad. Oh, and Becky Strange says, do they hold many concerts, Abby? I'm incredibly passionate about music, so wondered if, if any gigs were held. Yes, absolutely. And um, I think we've got a couple booked from, I think, like July, August time. But again, it will completely depend on the situation in the UK. Um, but we probably see like a live... Um, music act in the in the venue every week every every two weeks pretty much which is which is really good um, and you can find all of that information out on the engine shed website and um, so you can go to um, engine shed to find out all of the events that are coming up this year yeah and I just want to, I'm sorry yeah there's loads I know I've booked in to sort of December I think this year which is crazy but um, yeah. there are loads of, of music um, acts coming which is so exciting fingers crossed oh. There's something for everyone. I've watched so many great bands in the um, in the engine shed. I mean, this won't mean anything to the young folk watching, but I went to see The Damned not long ago, which was fabulous, uh, and I really enjoyed that. But no one else will know what I'm talking about, so I should probably best move on and say, and the food markets, uh, which sort of include go global sort of food, so a taste of, of the world really, are amazing. Yeah, and we've had we've had them kind of both years. So even this year, we managed to get the food market um, outside the students' union, which was great. 
this Darren is desperately trying to move us on, I think. And uh, <laughs> right. this, we've got Link and Peterborough football match to watch. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's on Sky, I think it's on. It's it? yeah. on now. It is. I'm doing Darren, in the Darren must be really annoyed. He must be really annoyed with us. Um, so this is seeing some of the amazing student union venues that are on campus. And uh, this, this I think, is the Swan, isn't it? Yes, so um, this is the Swan. This is kind of what we describe as like your local on-campus pub. Um, we have like quackyoki, we have board game nights and quizzes and things like that, which is great. And then um, we also have towers um, and that's our on-campus sports bar. Um, I think we have a picture of that as well. Um, and outside of towers, we actually have um, new benches. You can see them outside, we've got new benches and um, we've got the um, the lights up. So the, the benches are actually made out of recycled plastic um, and the lights are um, energy efficient LEDs, which is great. And that was something that we actually purchased this, this year. Um, and there's awnings and heaters and things like that. So that's an investment that we made um, that we know will kind of enhance the student experience all year round because when it gets to November, December time, it can become quite chilly to sit outside. Um, so we wanted to kind of extend the space that we have. Um, but I think one of the things that's really beneficial for our students to know is that all of our venues and our events are run by the student union. So all of the money that's spent in the venues actually goes back into the student experience. Um, so we're not like a, an external company. Um, all of that money that gets spent then gets put back in for refurbishments, for new televisions, for tables and, and lights and things like that. So I think that's really important. And that's inside of Towers and, and that looks fabulous, doesn't it? That's looking really good. Yeah, they play um, like loads of different sports from obviously the kind of the obvious ones from football and cricket and things but we do have kind of our American football team um going in there and asking to watch the NFL and things like that more like quirky um sports and things which you can you can ask to watch if you want to because there's different kind of televisions around the whole bar so you can have one thing playing on one side and something else playing on the other side and they do do really nice food as well and if we were there for an open day, Emma and I, and maybe even Abby, would be planning on going there for lunch at this very moment. Yeah, I would, I would definitely be there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we've got a new menu, actually. Well, I say new, it was new in September, but it still feels new, um, called the lineup. Um, and all of the products on the menu um, have a meat and a meat-free version. So they're um, suitable for um, vegetarians and vegans um, and people who um, people who eat meat. So um, that's a new menu that we've kind of designed this year, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, me and Georgia, um, who I live with, who's the vice president of education, um, kind of got into a bit of a hole of ordering it like every week. But why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not happy? Gosh, you're only you're only young once. You've got to enjoy it. Oh my god! And I think that's a fabulous thing, though. And I, it's trying to trying to communicate when we're not on campus that all of this is literally within a five minute walk of your accommodation. Yeah. You you can see the accommodation sort of literally opposite, sort of. The, so this looks over the Brayford, where there's an amazing otter family living at the moment, if you like wildlife, and there's loads of swans and geese, and then the accommodation is there. And it, it's it's so close, isn't it, Abby? I think that's the thing that I'd really like to try and get across. It's safe and close and a lovely place to be. Yeah, definitely. It's probably, what, five minutes from one side to the other side, and you've got the sports centre on campus as well. Um, so kind of all of those opportunities are um, are within walking distance, which I think is really important for student safety um, and kind of accessibility and things like that. Oh, and there's, there's some lovely questions coming in. I'm going to pick up some of these questions. So Becky, Becky Strange says, is the work in these facilities voluntary? If so, how can I join? I think we've got good news for you, Becky. Yes, so we actually employ student staff in all of our venues. Um, so we've got four venues all together um, and all of the people that work um, are student staff um, and we kind of see freshers kind of joining us in the team and then working for, for three years um, all the way through, which is which is really good. Um, so you can, you can get involved um, that way if you want to and you can find out more information again on the SU website. Um, Beck is asking about parks, uh, whether or not they're nearby. And I'm going to say 
Lincoln is really green. Um, there's the Arboretum, not far away. You can do a short bike ride out to Hearts Home Park. There are so many parks locally, if you like wildlife and, and nice walks and getting away. And we do a cycle hire scheme. So there are bikes on campus that you can literally take off and go and explore. And everything's quite flat, really, apart from that one steep hill to get to the cathedral. <laughs> um, and does the university help students with financial problems helping to find a job, for example? And there are two answers. I'll answer part of that, Nicole, and then, then I'll get Abby to answer part of it. So there's lots of welfare and financial uh, support for students in hardship. You go through our amazing student support unit run by an amazing colleague, Judith Kerry, who, who looks after students really, really well. So there's a lot of support for anyone needing either advice or guidance or or financial help that, that the university provides. But in terms of job hunting, I'll go to Abby. Yes, yeah, so um, we have an advice centre and we also have an, an opportunities department within the Students' Union um, who can help students to, to look for jobs if they are if they are looking, um, whether that's paid or voluntary. Um, they're both kind of things that we can help you with, as well as the Careers and Employability Centre on campus, which is um, literally within the, li um, within the library building, um, who can help you to, to job hunt as well. And... We've talked quite a lot about the societies and if you're on campus at one of our physical open days, you would probably get a demonstration by either our cheerleaders or our wonderful dance society who are really impressive and shown here, Abby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And our, I think both dance and cheerleading um, are two of our most engaged sports teams that we have. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, our dance society actually hold, um, held sorry, their first competition within the engine shed in I think it was February. Um, so it was good timing um, before the, before the lockdown. Um, and they had I think eight other universities in the UK come to Lincoln to compete in their competition, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, like the community that was built in there was was just was just brilliant, and it's something that they want to continue. And this year they're actually doing their competition online, um, so it's really good to see that not being like damaged um, um, by the current situation. Um, but we do have a lot of society showcases and things like that within the engine shed as well, um, which is brilliant. Um, and then more for our sports teams, um, there are opportunities for both competitive and social sport you can see our lacrosse team um here gathering probably before a game or a halftime talk or something like that um and they compete in books which is our weekly um sporting competition against other universities in the east midlands um and our sports teams as well have some fantastic opportunities to get involved in like varsity where we play um, all of our sports teams against hull and then we also have the opportunity to go on tour um the last couple of years we've been to croatia and italy um unfortunately that didn't happen um last year um or um a, imagine will not happen this year um to be honest but hopefully for 2021 2022 um academic year it will be back and it will be back with a vengeance as well so it'll be twice as good Perfect. no and we we're sort of coming to the end abby which i'm really sad about because as ever you are amazing and so interesting and it's so good to hear about what students do my question for you might sound a bit silly but why did you choose lincoln I think there's always kind of when you're looking for universities and you're kind of looking for that next step, you want to find somewhere that's kind of your home away from home. And I think the thing that I loved most about looking around Lincoln, um, I'm from a very small town that doesn't have any like big branded shops for like clothing or even like restaurants that you could just walk to and, and go into. And I think when I looked around, I was like, I, act I actually have the opportunity to live somewhere that I can leave in five minutes and, and, and go to a restaurant or go to a clothing shop that I haven't had the opportunity to go to how close everything is how kind of safe the community is um at lincoln but also just how beautiful it was i remember looking around it was a hot day we always have good weather for open days we're so lucky and i remember coming to look around and the the brayford was blue the sky was blue and i was just like yeah this is it this is where i want to go yeah no I'm going to say a massive thank you, Abby. Thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. And we'll say a big goodbye. And uh, I'm going to ask our producer, Darren, to join us, if, if that's okay. Darren, if you're there. Hi. 
Hello, Darren. You're, you've been amazing, amazing today. You're, you're one of our alumni, and uh, I wonder if, if we could just ask a little bit about your story before we close down today. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, obviously I'm working at the university now, loved it so much, didn't want to leave. Um, and I get to, I studied film and TV, graduated in 2014. Um, and I still get to all the, all the sort of skills I put, uh, I learned at university and put into practice in industry as well and, and worked for a year or two in industry as, a, as, as an editor. Um, and now still get to use our skills here in this world as well. Um, now more so given the um, pandemic um but a little bit about, about my story so i i stayed in courts um i chose lincoln firstly because i'm from a small town and and lincoln is brilliant in that it, it, it it's a city um but it's not a huge city and everything's quite close together everything's really compact so you literally could wake up five minutes before your lecture and stumble into your lecture um and I'm sure many students did that. I was definitely guilty of that a couple of times. Um, but it's also compact. Um, there's lots of stuff to do, um, lots of restaurants along the Brayford, Brayford as you've seen. Since I've been working here, so graduated a few years ago now, and the university actually, and the, the city has so much more about it. There's so many more. There's a new Everyman cinema that's popped up in town. It's regenerated a lot of the areas in the high street as well. Um, but actually, one, one of the things for me that is important to me about my time at university is the friends I made. And I still talk on a regular basis to the, to the friends that I made at university. Um, uh, and one being um, uh, a, a guy who um, was my best man at my wedding. I was best man at his wedding. I was a groomsman at uh, another one's wedding. Um, and like I said, we still talk to each other. Um, and actually, the 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 guy who I was a groomsman for at his wedding, um, I met him on my first day in court, and he set up the Harry Potter Society. And I was oh, head of Gryffindor oh, for a very short while. So <laughs> there you go. What a lovely little story, Darren. Because I think having spoken to you know several alumni and um, Abby earlier just now, the same sort of messages are coming out from everybody and you're all very different all studied very different courses all came from different parts of the country to Lincoln but yet the friendliness of the Lincoln community definitely is something that you've all brought away today to sort of say that I'm friends for life um, which is undoubtedly something that everybody is sort of taking away from this. One last thing, Darren, before we sort of go off. Um, what is, now you're in Lincoln, what is your most favourite thing in and around Lincoln? Well, there's all sorts of things to do, really, but at the minute it's um, walking around the Bale Gate um, just because it is, it is so nice. It is so picturesque. It, it's unreal. Um, and actually, as part of my role, I run um, a weekly photo competition with students um, here at the University of Lincoln. And we use Instagram and we ask students to submit on a weekly basis all their photos uh, of the city. And there's there's so many great photographers who study here um, who aren't even studying photography necessarily. But it just sh shows how beautiful the city actually is. And there's always, always a lot of photos up in the Belgate area. area. Um, it's and on campus as well, but yeah, very picturesque. I, I always take a photograph of the cathedral myself, and I don't know why, because I've lived here for an awful lot of years. But I you can't resist it. Have to do it. <laughs> Every time I look, it's so stunning. So I can see why we have so amazing photos. I think we're nearly at our end. Ellie, do you? I do, Emma. It's really. We've carried, we've, our time management's not been good at all today. We've done really badly, haven't we? I'm so sorry, Darren. I, ho I hope they haven't held up the kickoff of the imps for us. <laughs> sorry, I was getting a, yeah, I was getting a little, wasn't I? <laughs> No, you've been brilliant, Darren. You're you're a wonderful producer for us, and we're really grateful. And I'm incredibly grateful to you, Emma. You're an amazing host for this, and so much knowledge that you bring to share with everyone. Please, if you do have questions that we haven't answered, please go on to the virtual open day. You can talk to our students on Unibuddy. You can talk to staff. You'll find the links there. Please just go and have a look at the virtual open day, 
and ask us any questions that you like. Um, a huge thank you from us for joining us from everywhere in the world, everywhere from New Zealand to Lincoln. It's been wonderful to talk to you all and wonderful to hear your stories as well. So thank you very much for joining us and good afternoon. Have a good weekend.